Welcome. A second x ray has occurred on the sun just a month after the last one. Is there something going on in the sun that we should be worrying about? Well, let's see. Over the last few days, various sunspot regions have been producing a series of important M flares. The most active area has been NOAA region 1166, which is the large sunspot region seen here on the right of sun center in the northern hemisphere. This 24 hour movie shows that the spots don't change much during the flare. A close up of the region shows a large leading spot with two moderately sized trailing spots with a complex of minor spots in between. To give you some idea of the scale here, the large leading spot would easily cover about 10 planet Earths. In the equivalent magnetic movie, we again see little change. How is that possible if the energy from a flare is derived from the magnetic field? Surely we should see a major disruption of the field when such a massive flare explodes. The answer is that the magnetic field has hundreds of times more energy than even a big flare like this. So when there is a sudden release of energy, then it won't show a major change in the magnetic field. When we look at this region in detail, we see a complex mixture of strong positive and negative magnetic flux. That's a good indicator that a large flare is possible. Now let's move above the sunspots and see what the flare looked like in hotter plasma of the transition region. This image was taken in helium-2 at 304 angstrom, which is characteristic of about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. Watch the region carefully. Just before the flare, there is a huge puff of gas expelled towards the east, left. Then the region begins to brighten. Now let's see that again. There. Did you see it that time? That is a filament eruption associated with the flare. It will probably lead to a coronal mass ejection. What about the corona? Here we're looking at iron 16, which shows the hotter parts of the, the non-flaring corona at about 2 million degrees. The flare did not seem too impressive, did it? But when you look at 10 million degree plasma, you get a very different picture. That was the flare seen in iron 20 at about 10 to 15 million degrees Kelvin. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have any chronograph images to see the coronal mass ejection, but aurora was seen a couple days later, either from this event or some of the earlier M flares. What's going on is that the sun is slowly awakening from its protracted minimum in 2007 through 2009, and is starting to climb towards a new solar activity maximum. The recovery is actually slower than normal, which implies we'll be getting a long, low cycle for solar cycle 24, probably with several activity peaks. So this is nothing unusual, nothing to worry about, despite the inevitable scare stories that will likely surface. After this burst of activity dies down over the next few months, we predict that the next burst will be in October, plus or minus a couple of Carrington rotations. However, don't count out the possibility of more X flares in the next few weeks. But up to now, the pace has largely been set by the Northern Hemisphere. The South is due to start up sometime soon, most likely towards the end of this year. But once the first burst occurs, then we'll be able to get a clearer view of what Cycle 24 will look like in terms of its intensity and timing. If you enjoyed this video, I have done several others on the Sun, including last month's X-Flare, and quite a few on global warming. The links to them are posted in the description box below. Keep safe. Bye for now.